Kobe Bryant's legendary mindset and work ethic helped the NBA's third all-time leading scorer win five NBA championships, an Olympic gold medal, and a guaranteed spot in basketball's Hall of Fame. It is also the same mindset that he has taken into retirement. So what is this area? So this is our, uh, you know, our creative uh, area, our creative space. This is Kobe Bryant's court now. So we've created our own term called Granology. The creative Granology. space at his production company, Granity Studios. Kobe's next chapter, launched in 2016 after 20 seasons in the NBA. Is this something as a kid you thought about that you would want to have? Definitely not. You know, as a kid, the main focus was just playing the game. And like my last year, people asked me what I was going to do, and I'd say I'd go into storytelling. They were like, all right, well, like, what do you mean? That's not, that's not a real job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that sort of stuff. You know? so Dear Basketball. But with his first project, the animated short film Dear Basketball, I fell in love with you. Kobe did what Kobe does, so stunned deep. the crowd, not with a game winner, but an Oscar winner. Five seconds on the clock, ball in my hands. Yeah, jumping into writing and then win an Oscar right away. <laughs> yeah, well... Because that's how Kobe yeah. Bryant does it in my mind. Well, you know, it, it's funny, like, if you look back, I had a lot of practice on road trips, sitting on planes, writing, writing, writing. No, that's not good. Let me restructure this. Let me write this story. Da, da, da. You were practicing a different craft while you were playing your craft that yeah. so many know you for. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the structure of playing a game is storytelling. When we sit down and we watch basketball in Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, I mean, all those acts are present throughout the course of the game. And as you're managing a game, you're managing the ebbs and flows of it, you know, the momentum shifts. Right. I mean, these are all stories, and so it's all the rules of the world. Like basketball, storytelling is a passion for Kobe, which began in high school, right around the time he was winning a Pennsylvania State Hoops title. I, I had a great speaking arts teacher who taught how to structure story how to write story, you know, the world revolves around storytelling. And so it serves an important role in our society at large. I get excited to try to, you know, play my small part in it. Hey everyone, this is Kobe Bryant, and I'd like to introduce you to the Punies. Under the Granity umbrella, Kobe has helped shape stories from podcasts to film, all with the idea of using sport and entertainment to educate. For our studio, it's important to build it where parents trust that your kids can enjoy our content, yeah. novels, film, series, otherwise, and trust that they'll be gaining valuable information from that that's going to help them be better. Take the trio of books Kobe's created for young adults, described by some as Harry Potter meets the sports world. The Wizenard series. The first was basketball-based, the Wizenard series training camp and it hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Where did the idea for the Wizenard series come from? It, it's actually started from uh, Mary Poppins. The Julie Andrews the version. Julie Andrews version, <laughs> Dick Van Dyke version. Yeah. And I was saying, man, if there was a coach that was magical in that way, what would that look like? Kobe has created the fantasy world the books are set in, along with the characters and their backstories. He then plots out the storylines before turning to a hand-selected author. In September, Bryant published Legacy and the Queen about a young female tennis player. It was really important for me in writing Legacy to understand those emotional frustrations and the ebbs and flows of playing the sport. So for inspiration, well, where do you think he went? So I called Serena up and said, Serena, this is what I'm thinking. I obviously don't know nothing about tennis. <laughs> So like, you gotta talk me through. And we sat on the phone for about a good hour or so and we talked about the challenges of playing the sport, the training aspect of it all, you know, the emotion. You started playing tennis later in life yeah. after you stopped playing basketball. Yeah. How good were you when you first Horrible. got out there? Horrible. I mean, Kobe I was Bryant like, was bad at a sport. Oh my God, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, like I was swinging a racket as if I was hitting a home run. You know, it was just... You do what you know. Wrong sport, dude. Yeah. Wrong sport, you know. <laughs> All right, so you guys know what to do. As for the right sport. Remember, I don't want them being able to breathe. It's still a part of Kobe's right, latest chapter. Right Not as a player, but the coach of his 13-year-old daughter Gigi's basketball team. Mom is on three, one, two, three. Mama. It's a lot of fun. I mean, she's really driven, very competitive. And we have a group of kids that love the game. And they're gonna have an appetite to learn more. And so I enjoy being around them. Just slow it down, slow it down, hit her, off you go. What's the biggest challenge in coaching your own daughter? 
making sure she knows that I love her whether she plays well or plays like crap. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You know, you're my daughter before you're a basketball player. And it's important that she knows that that's how I feel. And those aren't words. You have to behave that way. You have to show her that. After a tough game, you get in the car and it's forgotten. Kobe the dad is admittedly a bit outnumbered at home. He and his wife, Vanessa, gave birth to their fourth daughter in June. Yeah, this group I, of we, six, Kobe, you're the only guy. We, uh, they roll deep. I get ganged up on quite a bit. Um, but it's fine. In your house, do they look at you and go, Dad, just stop? Oh my God, yeah. Like, I, like I, I don't never know what I'm talking about. I have absolutely no say so. Uh, and, they, and they do it tongue in cheek, but, it's, uh, but they mean it. <laughs> <laughs> do you miss basketball? Play, do you miss playing basketball? I mean, I guess so. I guess so. Like, you know, when, if I'm shooting around with my kids, then yeah. Yeah, from that aspect of it. But, not enough to want to go out and, and play. That chapter has been written, one of the best to play the game of basketball. As for Kobe's full story. 50 years from now, how do you want the world to look at Kobe Bryant? You know, as a person that was able to create stories that inspired their children and families to bond together and for their children to dream and have the initiative to wake up every morning and do all they can to help that dream become a reality. You know, that would be really, really cool. And um, Bianca says it best. I'm like, hey, where to get buckets? She goes, yeah, I'm gonna get buckets like Gigi. I'm gonna get buckets like Gigi. Because she just doesn't know. She has never seen me play basketball. Right. will never know. Like, she's too little. So in her mind, dad is just a person that puts out stories. So the, the basketball side of you will be something for the, the older set. If I'm doing everything right, that's what will happen.